Okay guys, so how did you start your magic collection? A uh, very interesting topic and I do want to talk a little bit about my particular collection and then the times I have sold my collection and times I've repurchased and uh, ways to build your collection. I'm really interested in helping newer magic players build a collection in a affordable yet quick way. Uh, first, before I begin this, and I'm saying this so I don't forget, one of the best ways if you have no magic cards uh, and you don't know the game that well is to draft. So when you draft, you normally pay $10. I know some places, uh, what I get a feedback a lot is in Australia, it costs like $50 to draft. It's like insane amount. Uh, you can draft, but you have to be very careful about these sets that you pick to draft. So you draft Journey into Nyx, you're not going to draft anything good. Like, I can't think of a card in Journey into Nyx. I mean, Kiora is going to be reprinted that has any eternal value to it, especially when you compare it to Conjure Tarkir with the five fetch lands. Um, you, at the very least, know that these particular five cards will always be tradable, they will always be used as trade bait, and they will always be at least 10 bucks. Um, maybe after rotation, they will drop a little bit, but. For the most part, you have a general understanding that these cards will. If you have, if you are in a ten dollar draft and you see one of them, you pick them and you pay for your draft. Uh, that I don't feel uh, like is true when the, this particular block came out. Uh, there's not many cards that you can first pick and make back your money. Um, even in these blocks, I mean, there's definitely not five of them. I can tell you how much. And then you put in Sharkon, Soren. Um, how much is Rhino? I feel like Rhino is about eight bucks or ten bucks right now, but there's other cards in those particular uh, in Contra Tarkir which make it very valuable to draft. That the same can be said about our TR. So you had Abrupt Decay, you had Death Rite Shaman before the banning, so it was actually quite more valuable, and you had various other. Oh, uh, the Shocklands! I was like, wait, we're missing something. <laughs> we're missing something kind of important. Yeah, so there's many cards that you could open at the non-mythic level and make back your money. And when you look at drafting, it's the non-mythic level because there's not that many myth mythics, but in a box there should be about two to four fetch lands in the box. So out eight people, you guys should be able to pull, at least two of you should be able to pay your draft from just the opening of the packs via um, the, you know, the fetch lands themselves, just the fetch lands. And then two of you should be able to pay for the draft if you win prizes and you didn't first draft a fetch land. So it's very good. Like it makes sense. It makes a lot of uh, sense to me to draft cards of Tarkir. So now that's out of the way. I used to buy my collections off Craigslist, and I'm, I know a lot of you know if you watched my previous videos, you know I'm kind of a hater of Craigslist. But back when I was younger in college, uh, I used to go to like these really like scary Craigslist meetups at like, you know, in the subway at nighttime. I used to bring my um, girlfriend at the time with me and that was actually very bad and uh, it stressed it out. It caused a lot of stress in the relationship, I guess, but I was always buying and trading and buying and trading because it's kind of fun, right? But sometimes it's a little dangerous. Craigslist works if you live in a city type of environment. In New York City, Craigslist is wonderful because there's so many people selling magic collections. And I have purchased fantastic magic collections from Craigslist back when I was in college. And I flipped them and I've made a decent chunk of money. Actually, I never really make money, I just increase my collection. As I'm going to talk about a little later, if you're trying to make money from collection, that's extremely difficult because right now you have eBay fees, you have TCG player fees. I mean, they're not much better than buy list, to be honest with you. And buy list, for most cards, is going to take 50% of your retail value and slice it in half. And if you try to get someone on Craigslist for like, um, hey, I'm going to buy your collection. A lot of collections are overvalued, especially now where people have been more recent players. Um, and you're never going to really get that epic uh, haul like you did before where the guy doesn't know what the cards are worth that you hear about. I've never experienced it, but you hear stories about that. But those stories are non-existent now because of, first, more people are wise um, when open boosters open the uh, Black Lotus. Yeah, that got a lot of attention. 
um, when Forbes magazine publishes articles every month about how awesome the speculation aspect of magic, how the uh, Power 9 have outgrown the SMP 500, that catches attention. So you have different ways that people are getting news about magic and that their collections might be valuable. Secondly, you have a lot of very aggressive buyers. So when I was in college, there wasn't that many aggressive buyers because there's not that many stores, to be honest with you. And those stores were not paying what they currently pay. Um, buy list was not anything close to what it is now. Plus, like for the most part, these stores, you didn't know what you were going to get from them. Now every store has a buy list. Even the smallest store I've ever been to has a buy list of some type. Um, so there's this knowledge of hey, I can take it to a game store, any game store, I don't need to sell on Craigslist, and they'll just give me money for it, and I'll probably get more than some random dude on Craigslist, which 95% of the time is probably true. Now, how, so that's how I built my collection. Uh, but I sold my collection two times, and I sold it, uh, most recently I sold it after JC My Sculptor was banned, and Elspeth, I remember I had a place at Elspeth's, and so I began playing, collecting, I guess, after Innistrad. So times had changed a lot. So when you're collection, uh, when you're collecting, building during Innistrad, that's a lot different from when you were, I was building my collection in college. Innistrad, Dark Ascension, Averson Restored. Um, at that particular moment in time, the best way to build a collection was simply to trade. So trade sharking was very, prominent um, and there was a lot of targets like the Fetchlands had just rotated out, Elspeth, Foils, EDH had just came out with the commander decks and so there was a lot of ways where a casual player would come to EDH night and you could trade them a casual card worth a dollar and get a Liliana of the Veil back. Foil, <laughs> believe it or not, or Snapcaster Mage back foil because to that casual player who has opened it, has purchased a box, they don't value those cards. They value dragons and angels. Um, there's a story from Groovy Geckos. One of the uh, people, one of the, uh, what's, uh, the people who go to the store, uh, who wasn't my friend, but I saw him in the store often. Really nice guy, always friendly, made excellent trades review. Uh, he went to Richmond, he went to a store in Richmond whose name, I would honestly tell you the name because I felt this was such a bad experience. And they traded him bulk angels for his entire, he had two foil Liliana de Veils. They convinced him to trade both of them, both of them, because he wanted to keep one for his EDH stack because he was one of those type of players. And multiple Snapcaster Mages, uh, tons of Fetch Lands, he had Onslaught Fetch Lands, he had dual lands as well from revised and unlimited and he came back with a stack of angels and he was so happy but the value exchange had to be something like a hundred bucks of angels versus two thousand dollars of standard playable highly movable cards at that time so that's essentially how you built a collect that was the era of john medina the original shark now things have changed again um, I don't recommend sharking. I feel like that's just bad practice. And you know now, because once it used to be when you shark somebody, you could not, they wouldn't know that you sharked them because they wouldn't look at prices. Pricing was less important back then than it is now. Now everyone knows what a card is worth because a friend of a friend is going to tell you. And then some people will even come in and cut you know the deal up. So now. No, you the Craigslist era is gone. The uh, trade sharking era has passed for the most part. Now we have the speculation era. I don't like this particular era very much, um, and partially because when you buy a card at retail and you want to make money from it or you want to build your collection, you are hoping the card at least doubles to make back your money, and that's not even including shipping or even like damaging and stuff. So it's very difficult to make money speculating. But that being said, it is extremely easy to build a collection speculating and I'll explain this. My best speculation, 
I've had a few good ones, but my best one was Underworld Connections. I traded, I purchased them for eight cents a piece, eight to 10 cents a piece, hundreds of copies of this card. And I was able to trade a play set into a shock land, into this shock land, into that shock land, into this abrupt decay, into, I mean, a lot of the abrupt decays I have in storage are because of this Underworld Connections. I went to every card store in my local, and I actually went to GP too, and I just kept trading play sets or, you know, hey, hey, have five of them. Because to me, that's 40 cents for a Shockland or Abrupt Decay. That type of speculation is going to work because you're not trade, you're trading it for the retail value and people actually need that card. So when Mono Black was the deck, Pack Rats, uh, Night Veil vale Spectres, you could have all got them, Desecration Demon, you could have got that particular card, those cards in that deck, that was the number one deck, for less than a dollar a piece, easy. Any of them, I believe some of them, pack rats are probably around like 20 cents for one time. And then it, uh, Desecration Demon, I think hit like 12 bucks. And it was a bulk rare for the longest time. So if you catch wind of a very strong deck in standard and the cards are cheap, the cards are not gonna stay cheap very long. The same with Goblin Rabble Master. When you look at the card, it was a bulk card for a very long time. But then something happened, the meta changed, and now it became a $20 card. Now I believe it's dropped down to 10. So when you're building your collection, one of the best ways you can build a collection is to kind of know the meta, know what your local players are playing, know what cards are trading well, and go on TCG Player and buy lots of them and then trade them into the environment. Like I was trading Underworld Connections like hotcakes. They were going like this, this, and like every time I get back a abrupt decay, like if you're trading Underworld Connections, it was two ninety nine dollars on Star City Games. I know this very well because I traded so many of them. So you trade a playset for $12 and abrupt decay at that time was eight or $9. The guy next to you, Snap takes that because he's like $12 versus $9, no problem. But what he doesn't know, or what even if he does know this, is you paid 40 cents for that you know, five of them or, wait, four, yeah, like you paid 40 cents for, at the most, for a playset and your shipping costs are non, I mean, it's, it doesn't make a difference because you're, when I was buying these uh, Underworld Connections, I was buying them in 40 or 50 batches and, uh, and they were shipping it in the cheapest way possible. So the best way to build a collection is you have to take a gamble, but what card are you going to take a gamble on? You're not going to take a gamble on Tomogorf. That does not make any sense. You're not going to take a gamble on Wasteland. You have to take a gamble on some of these penny stocks, if you will. Because if a penny stock, like Desecration Demon, like, I can name, I'll name a, a few recent ones. Uh, what was that? Ghostway? If you had Ghostway and for some reason you were speculating on Ghostway <laughs> just by accident, then and it goes up to 18 bucks. Wow, that's crazy. Or Amulet, uh, Summoner's Pack, any of the... Summer's Bloom was probably like a 50 cent card before it exploded. Uh, it, you can build a collection very fast and the reason you can build it is because everyone knows that card is liquid. And that's how I would build a collection today is if I had you know, an extra $50, I would probably look very carefully on one card and that card being like 50 cents or less and saying, I'm going to trust my heart of the cards and believe this card might make it. Because if the card does make it, you you are you have the a liquid trade bait to build an entire collection from. I probably had 20 shock lands, eight abrupt decays at least. Um, I actually had some voice of resurgence trades into uh, you know. Like, it wasn't always a direct trade, but I would always try to make sure a playset of uh, Underworld Connections was put into the trade somehow. And even if they don't need them, they just realize, hey, well, this card is $12, this playset is $12, the card I'm giving you is $7, yes, snap pick. And yeah, I mean, you can do that. You can do that all day um, because you purchased them for 40 cents. And to you, it's like buying a Shockland for 40 cents. Obviously, that's a very good deal for you. Bye, guys.